I would say that my journey that led me um, to Menlo and beyond really started for me as a child. I didn't realize that people would not love me, you know, that people would not regard me, that something about my skin color or my hair texture might play a role in how people treated me. So I was that kid that cared about every kid. The kid didn't have lunch. I was asking my mom to make an extra peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, I was that kid that was very empathetic to other kids that were around me. And I really kept that notion through elementary school, through high school, through college, um, just wanting people to treat other people better. To recognize, yes, there are all of these dimensions of diversity. We're all different, but on the human level, we're all the same. You know, there were a variety of things that uh, drew me to Metlo College. And then when I got here, I just really loved the students and the, the smaller campus, if you will. I love that there's students from all over the world here. And so I was just um, eager to be a part of creating Leaders for the Future. I started teaching diversity in the workplace, which fit me really well because I was just leaving a diversity department as a diversity manager in high tech. So that was my first course. And then um, they were looking for someone to teach culture, real expressions and media. And so that was something I also had an interest in. And so I started teaching that. And then with all of the things that were going on nationally, different events that were going on, they were looking for someone to teach race and racism. So I also had background in that. And so now teach race and racism as well. And last term for the first time, I taught Menlo 101. I've been fortunate to be able to do a lot of work with Stanford's Center for Compassion. And so because of my work with Stanford C-Care program, other organizations, other educational facilities who are also interested in cultivating compassion globally, usually find the C-Care program. So I was contacted by an organization that was working with Harvard to do a, a training on compassion cultivation training. And one of my favorites is I had the opportunity to teach two cohorts of uh, students at Yale. It has been a dream come true that I've had this opportunity to go beyond Stanford and the Bay Area, to really go global. Uh, I think we're in a time when people are looking at mental health and just how to bridge differences and this notion of compassion, which is witnessing suffering and wanting to mitigate that suffering is kind of on the rise where there are more people that care about such things like that. So what can I do in my life, in my volunteering, in my teaching, in my working, that will be a bridge and help people to learn about one another and have regard for one another and care for one another? I want to wake up the consciousness of my students, maybe get them to think about what's going on around them and to 
engage both their heart and their minds. It's important to learn things and to be prepared to contribute to society. I see them as the future and I'm, I'm betting on them. And I want them to be aware of what's going on, awake to what's going on. I want them to uh, engage their minds and think about potential solutions to problems of the day or that might come up in the future. And I want them to be kind to other people and kind to themselves, take care of themselves. I'm kind of Mr. Rogers as a professor, right? I, I want people, I've seen leaders from my 20 plus years in high tech and corporate America. And now I see students before they become those leaders. And so I have this wish this dream for the leaders of the future to possess both competency in their minds and in their hearts.